So that those that did not join us in person will be able to review afterwards. So I wanted to start by asking all of you about the progress that you have made since last time. So how many of you have joined the previous session? What do you mean? Uh, the previous session that we had for this program. You talking about were we in attendance? Oh yeah, yeah. Just a few were present in the previous session. Oh, okay. I was present. All right, perfect. Thank you. And Juliana is saying that she was. And Nayan, were, were you there also? Okay. Okay, so great. Last time I asked everyone to try and. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. This is Nayan. Uh, yeah, but I was, uh, you know, when he was, uh, I was joining that class and I was following you uh, how to do the pipeline, but I thought I will do later. But I, I was waiting for the, you post the recording, but I, I never found that. So I could not finish that pipeline. Uh, Okay, well, that's fine. I'm sorry about the recording. I did not uh, remember to record it on time. So this time we'll try and do the pipeline together. And um, also, I did want to ask all of you if you have updated your profile. So I know that Winin has. Um, Nayan, were you able to update your profile? Yeah, I updated it. What else need? I think I'm fine. Okay. And Juliana, were you able to log into Omix Logic and update your profile? Um, I believe so. Okay. I'm trying to log into it right now. Wi-Fi at my school is being really um, terrible. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Uh, so let me just briefly show you how to do that. And I see we have Dr. Bashir join us as well. So I just uh, wanted to make sure that everybody from last time was able to log in successfully. So we want to uh, make sure that everybody's profile is updated. How do you get there? That's question number one. So the way you get there is once you're logged in, you go right here and it will show you your profile plus your activity and the courses that you're enrolled in as well as the programs that you're involved in. And if you are going to be working on an independent project, that project is going to be here. And then here you will have all of your certification. So as you make progress in this whole program, the objective is really to look at some examples of projects that others have done and try to do that. Yes, Nayan, did you want to say something? Okay. So the objective is really to go through some examples of projects that we have to learn about how to do the analysis independently. And most of the steps are actually recorded there in a fairly detailed way. So if you lose track of where we are and what we're trying to do, you can always go back there. The other thing that <clears throat> you might want to uh, kind of keep track of is on the page, you will find the information about upcoming sessions and uh, the previous recordings and things like that. So really, this is a way to keep track of the links for the sessions. And uh, also, there is below here a way to ask a question. So this is for Slack. Have all of you joined Slack? I have. All right, perfect. And Nayan, were you able to join Slack? Yes, Dr. Yeah, okay. Okay, perfect. And uh, 
Okay, thank you, Anin. And what about Dr. Bashir? Were you able to join the Slack as well? I wasn't, I'm sorry, I wasn't follow the, uh, this part. So do you mind if we will go back? I'm sorry. Yeah, so I was just asking, th there's the link. I'm gonna post it right here on um, the uh, chat. You can create an account if you don't have an account yet or down at the bottom of the program page, if you scroll all the way down, this is a button that will lead you to the, to the Slack channel. And so on the Slack channel, you'll be able to ask technical questions. If you have any, as you're going through the pipelines or whatever analysis that we're doing, if you have any questions, feel free to post it here. I'll try and uh, keep everything updated here as well. You can see here invitations to the Zoom meeting or recordings of the previous session or any kind of reference articles, especially for things that we discuss in the, in the session. If you have any questions or if you want additional information and I have those articles, I'll be posting them here as well. Okay, so um, last time we spoke about multiple sequence alignments and we even went uh, to find some data and try to analyze that data together. And so I wanted to start from there so that we can repeat some of the things that we did. And there's actually two different things that we did last time. So we looked at where does this data come from? So what are some of the uh, different data types and what are some of the different ways that we can analyze that data, just kind of getting an overview. And then we looked at some specific examples based on multiple sequence alignments and based on consensus sequences as opposed to reads that were generated but did not map onto the reference genome. So to do that, I want to start with a, a brief example. So we'll go to the platform and hopefully this will refresh everyone's memory on where we were. So the first thing that we tried to do was to take an example from a uh, project, an SF9 project. And that project is data that was stored in FASTQ files. And the way we can get uh, FASTQ files to understand what's in them is we need to map those FASTQ files that contain short reads onto a reference genome. And to do that, we looked at this example where we took several different steps uh, from loading the data and then to uh, map this data onto the reference genome. Um, or uh, we also could include uh, trimming the data before that and then uh, performing PCR clean. And then uh, we can do the same, right? So the objective of that pipeline was to generate unmapped reads. Has anyone taken a look at the SF9 project already and try to replicate that? Okay, so just so that you know how to follow the same steps, I want to recommend for all of you to go um, in to the courses tab and find a project that you can follow along called SF9. Okay, so this one, Project 8, Spot of Terror for Gupera. It really tells you how to run this pipeline and to then map the non-mapped reads onto a new genome to understand uh, what could be found inside those reads. So that was example number one that we did. Example number two that we did was uh, an example from phylogenetic analysis. So how to do multiple sequence alignment and then using mathematical model or a statistical model for inference of relationships between sequences of viruses. And so that was right here under the phylogenetic tree. And we looked at Ebola virus or SARS-CoV-2, either one, what we are essentially doing in this pipeline is we are uh, looking at sequence similarity 
based on nucleotide similarity or based on amino acid sequence similarity, and then using the nucleotides as tricodons or uh, trinucleotide codons that encode for amino acids to understand how they could be evolutionary related to each other. So how many of you remember this uh, pipeline that we did last time? Okay, so um, if any of you have tried doing this last time, or maybe even before that, you were familiar with multiple sequence alignment, should be familiar. Uh, has anyone previously done sequence alignment here? No, I am not. We did it yeah. last time, if I'm mistaken. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Winin, you remember doing this from last time, right? Yes. Okay. And Nayan also uh, remembers this or, or has done it before. And uh, Juliana, do you remember this from last time? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, Dr. Bashir, it's okay if you don't remember. No, it's, it's fine. I, I, I believe we did it last time. It's, it's fine for me. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But uh, today I just have uh, some allergies. So it's fine. So, yeah. I, I, I will do my best to follow with you. Okay. okay. So this was an example without any real data, right? All we wanted to understand here was conceptually how to go from loading the data, then performing multiple sequence alignment. Then this is a phylogenetic analysis using these multiple different types of uh, algorithms. And then we looked at the consensus tree between all of them to understand what is the relationship between the sequences based on sequence similarity and based on the molecular clock. So now let's take this and we will actually find the data ourselves. And instead of building this uh, pipeline from a demo, we will try to upload our own data and see how that works. So uh, first of all, what kind of data are we using for this phylogenetic analysis? Does someone remember what type of files are we looking for? Is it FASTA files? Yep, perfect. So FASTA files, as you remember, contain nucleotide sequences, and that will be typically a whole genome or some portion of a genome that is uh, called a consensus genome. So to find some of this data, let's go to NCBI virus. And we'll try to find some data here that we can use today in our analysis. So an NCBI virus, uh, let me know once you're there so we can move on. Okay, can you put something? Uh, okay, thank you, Dr. Bashir. You're locked out of your account. What, what does that mean, Juliana? I tried to log in and it said that my access has been temporarily, um, I guess, like paused or something from the site creator. I got like um, an error. From here? Oh, wait, let me try something else. I have a better idea. Okay, uh, have you been able to log in to, or you don't have to log in. Were you able to navigate to NCBI virus? Yeah, I can do that. I was trying, I was talking about my other account, but we can talk about that after. Okay. Okay, so here we want to find some sequences that we can analyze. So remember that we can search by virus. And so let's take an example from SARS-CoV-2 viruses. Uh, if we type in SARS right here and just wait a couple of seconds, it should pop up. Okay, so here you can see different uh, viruses that are bats or other coronaviruses, but we wanna go for this severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2. So if you click on that, it should take you to the page with all of these sequences. 
Okay, so let me know once you're here. Okay, so if you did manage to get here, you will find here different types of filters on the left side. And so we can select based on accession ID. So type in the specific IDs that we're interested in. We can do sequence lengths, whether it's the full genome. Who knows how long is the SARS-CoV-2 genome approximately? What keyword do you use for the search? What was it 150? The link, sequence link. Right, th that was probably for reads, 150. Oh, okay, okay. But the yeah. genome length is about 30,000 nucleotides. No, what's keyword to use for the search? Uh -huh. So if you go back and you just start from search by virus, what you do is there's a search field right here, and you just type in SARS, and you can wait a few seconds, and it will appear in the dropdown. Okay. And then I use this SARS-CoV-2. Do you see the same thing, Nayan? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And so once you click there, it pulls up all of the available sequences, which is 842,166. <clears throat> So here, as I mentioned, you can search by or filter by accession, sequence length, and all kinds of additional things that you can find. And what's interesting is that they've recently added here the Pango lineage. And so you can search here for the different types of lineages that you probably are familiar with. Um, and uh, Here's the UK variant, for example, or the UK Pango lineage. So you can search here by Pango lineage. You can also look over here by host. As you remember, there's human, bat, pangolin. So here, for example, you can search for pangolin. Um, yeah, actually. The pangolin, I forget the scientific name for pangolin, but let's try that also. Well, we have to look it up. Unfortunately, they did not do it um, that easy to find, but we will look for human. Okay, so. <clears throat> now let's try to think of a meaningful comparison to build our phylogenetic tree. What do you think might be an interesting way to study these sequences and ask some kind of a research question about differences in nucleotide sequences? Any suggestions, any ideas? Um, could we see if they are, uh, uh, I guess, geographically uh, aligned or in some type of uh, specific area or, you know, uh, in other animals? I don't know. Okay. Okay. So, so geographic location. So we can search for different countries. For example, we can look for geographic region right here and we can say, why don't we find, let's say, Louisiana, which would be in America. And here we can search for LA. And 
maybe we can compare that to Um, let's see, USA, LA, and I wonder if I can have another one. Well, let's say California. Okay. Now, we have at least several different types of filters that we can do. We said already we can do the host, human, different animals. We can do location. But probably a time component is also important here, beginning of the pandemic, the end of the pandemic, in the middle somewhere. So to give it some contrast, we might want to find some additional um, filtering here by collection date. So collection date. And we can say, let's say the 30th of December, or let's say 19. Um, this. this is that's July. Okay, so 30, 12. 2019. Maybe, oh, okay, maybe they don't have it from there. So let's do it. 02-2020. Is that a valid date? No. Let's find 2020 January 1st. Okay, two, let's say from 2020, and we'll take something in the end. Okay, so here we have multiple, so 7,000 nucleotides. We've selected different characteristics. Maybe we should make sure that we also search for genome completeness, nucleotide completeness, and we'll just take the complete ones. So now we should have 5,161 genomes to select from. Does everyone have the same number? I do. All right. Yes. Okay. Um, Dr. Elia, we're supposed to do it in the same time with you or after you will finish it, uh, but I'm confused. I think it would be better to do it at the same time. That way we can start the pipeline and you will have your own individual pipeline and you will be able to do it on your own. Maybe your ideas about what exactly you want to analyze will change. And so by next time you can actually have a pipeline running. Okay, and Nayan, were you able to find all of these filters? No, I'm trying. Okay. Do you want us to wait or should we go on? Uh, I can do later uh, when I finish the lecture. Okay, well, today we wanted to do some hands-on so that everybody can try and follow along, but you can also review this afterwards. So we have here now over 5,000. So let's select some interesting ones that might be useful for our analysis. So again, we have here also sorting by different types, and it's kind of difficult to use this interface to actually select the ones that we would like to analyze. So instead, what we can do is we can uh, go right here and we can download this. Okay, so here, if you click on download here on top, you can select what exactly do we want to 
download. And I think what we want to start with is just take the CSV format and download a table. So I'll download all records next. And here I will have different types of information that I can include in the um, actual table. So I'll just download as it is suggesting. And once I have this file, I can open it in Excel and select the specific uh, ones that I would like to compare. So I'm going to open this in Excel. Okay, and so now I can filter them more easily and select the ones that I'm interested in. So I have here a collection date and I want to select something that will give me a contrast. So I want to first of all select maybe something that is early on and then something that is later from two sites. Remember I had Louisiana and California. And so here I have uh, from California and here I have some from Louisiana, but I have a lot of them. So what I will first do is I will create a filter and I will just select one of them. So let's just select from California first. Once I've selected these, let's select some early ones and I can just sort them by ascending. And so I see this is uh, the first month, right? So this is in January and then February, et cetera. And so maybe I should take January, February, March. So I'll have three. <clears throat> and maybe from each one, from each one of our, um, uh, from each one of our um, uh, selections, we'll take a look at the pangolin clade, right? And we will take a look here so that we select some uniform ones. So I see here that in the beginning, remember that it started splitting up from A, to B, to C, et cetera. And so here you can start selecting, maybe let's take just the A ones. So this is in January. So I'm going to create right here. I'm going to just take this whole section and then I will take another one from A. So this is in February. And here's another one in February, or sorry, this is in March. So I'll take, these are all from March. I'm just going to put them right here. And here I'll just copy this header and put it inside. Now, since some of you are following along, do let me know if you want me to slow down and explain what I'm doing. If you just want to follow along later, that's also fine. But I'm just creating here a collection of specific ones that I will select for my analysis. So I took some from California. Now let me find some from Louisiana. In Louisiana, it seems like I need to, again, do ascending. The earliest one I see is in March. So why don't we take the ones Again, do we have any A's? Yes, yeah, so we have some A's, so I have some A, and then I have another one, A in March, and another one right here, also in March. So I will take these for the early ones. So I can even mark them here. So these are California, early, And these are Louisiana early. And now I'll take the late ones. So first of all, let's go to Louisiana late ones. So here I have the end of 2020. And now I will be sure to take the ones that are Bs for sure, but also as it goes into the B, it starts splitting up even more. And so I can see the 1.1 or 1.2, 1 1.5, so these are the later ones. So why don't we take also something consistent? So we will take here <clears throat> the ones from the 11th month. And so let's take, if we take B12, it seems like we have B12, B12. So we have quite a number of B12. And also we have B12 
1596, 1596, okay, so 1595, okay, so we have a few of these as well. So let's try to take 1596, okay, so here's one, and 1596, here's another one, and here's another one. So these are going to be Louisiana late. And now let's do the same thing for California. Okay, so here we have <clears throat> okay, so yeah. So here we have um, B196. Okay, so this doesn't have 596. So we can choose something else that is also consistent here. So it looks like we have 1311 a lot. Five nine three six eight. Okay, so let's see what else do we have here. So it's eleventh month. You can see that the number of sequences is starting to grow very fast. Five nine six we don't have. So why don't we go? Do we have five one two? Okay, so here we have the eleventh month. The eleventh. Okay, and then here we have 12th, so right there, one, two, let's find from the 10th. Okay, right here. Okay, now what we need from here is to just select these accession IDs to be able to find them, the actual sequences, right? So this is gonna be California Lee. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that I save this table so that whenever I want to go back and see where did this actually come from, I will be able to annotate my information from here. So I will take and I will save this. And save it like this and call it so I can easily find it. So now I want to take these accession numbers and it's easy to go back to the interface that we were in. And remember, I have all kinds of filters here, right? So where would I use these IDs to filter out and find the specific uh, genomes that I'm looking for? What do you think? Anyone? Is everyone still there? Yeah. Yeah, we, we are here, but I'm, I'm slightly later. I'm uh, trying to do different places. And uh, I did like the sequence length uh, is really uh, from a thousand to like uh, um, like twenty, but it didn't work. So first, I tried to compare Egypt to the Netherlands instead of uh, Louisiana to California. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, but I'm tr so, but I'm late. I'm late because you are really you are uh, speaking too fast. But it's fine. I can go back to the video. I can practice again. So yeah, don't, never mind about just uh, uh, like for being late for me. No, that's fine. But I do want to mention that if you can see the total length of the genome is about 30,000 nucleotides. So whenever you're selecting the range of length, try to make it either the complete one, which is going to be close to 30,000, or if you're looking, some of them are sequences of individual genes 
And so those could be, for example, 1,000 or 2,000 or something like this, uh, and even shorter. So the so, minimum, the minimum yeah. should be the the average of the the length, correct? Like oh, thirty thousand. Well, this is the minimum or the maximum. Right. Well, this is the question. I think more dependent on what your question is. Do you want to find what's called overall global yeah. sequence similarity? I am trying to see like similar the 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 strains in Egypt versus like Netherlands, the Holland. Uh, because I am Egyptian and I got my PhD from Holland. So uh, this is why I'm trying to see that. I'm curious to know. And also I'm from Louisiana. I'm more in Louisiana right now. So, um, Well, yeah, so what uh, would make sense is to think about, do you want to find similarities in the full genome or just in a portion like the spike protein? Which one would be more interesting to you? Um, initially, I can do the, the full genome as initial step, and if I find similarities, I will see another like uh, the portion of the genome itself. So, the, like, okay, as a, so then as, you should as, just as, go as the so, so instead of mm -hmm. right, so instead of going for sequence length, go mm -hmm. under RevSeq genome completeness, which means that it is the complete genome, and select here complete. I do not have the option for the complete in this in my in my uh, website over here. I don't know why. Uh, I tried to see the complete. I did. Yeah. I, go ahead. And now here, nucleotide completeness. Mm -hmm. And now complete. I have partial. I do not have the complete. Uh, the problem. Probably because you already have sequence length. Maybe remove your filter for sequence length. Uh, this is before doing the sequence length. Uh, this is before doing it. Uh, so let let me to I will start from the beginning from the link and uh, uh, yeah we can uh, because today is a practice day so if you don't mind I can share my my slides if you don't mind you can share your screen well the other question yeah let, let's let's try that real quick and and for everyone if you also have similar challenges do let me know let me just try here yeah go ahead do you want to share your screen. Uh, Bashir? Uh, yeah, actually, it says actually I cannot I cannot start screen share while other uh, participant is sharing. So oh, okay. it's, it seems actually uh, you need to make it like uh, multiple uh, participants. I think you should be able to share now. Okay. Oh, okay. So I'm here already. So this is the. Oh, uh, yeah, I see it right now. Okay, complete. Okay, I didn't see it before. Okay, so if I if I will go to share, uh, like uh, compare a region, uh, like uh, Africa, uh, sorry, not Africa, all the Africa. Uh, I will take like Egypt, Egypt, and versus uh, Netherlands. the Netherlands. Okay, and so you said actually, I, if I would like to uh, make like the whole genome, so that uh, go to like, this is a complete, correct? Yeah, yeah, and this is ignore, correct. Yeah, yeah and ig ignore the uh, sequence uh, length. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, I think you're on the right track, right? So now mm -hmm. think about what maybe the dates, uh, yeah, you know, dates, if you yeah. are comparing from the same date, you might want to say, I want to just select one month and compare it within that month. Within one month. I, I did one year, so this is maybe it's my mistake. If I will. I mean, remember, that. this is a virus, so it is replicating fast mm -hmm. and it is acquiring mutations. Probably every month there are some new mutations. So mm -hmm. that's why it makes sense to make it more specific. So let me do uh, from uh, try to well, get you, the yeah, you, you go on with that, but I will just show you okay. that maybe, right? So here, mm -hmm. um, again, let me just kind of remind you how did we 
use this. It's a little bit difficult to just use this. So instead, once you've made your preliminary selection, you mm -hmm. can go into download. And instead of downloading the nucleotide sequences, just download the table and then filtering it in Excel would be much easier. So once you have your filtering, mm -hmm. what you can take are just the accession IDs. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I can reset all of these filters and just go into accessions. Okay. And now I have, you see 12 nucleotide sequences, and these are 12 that I selected from here. So I know exactly what they are, but I don't have to mess with all the filters. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you know, that's, um, it's very interested in reality. Um, it's good actually. And also the, the, the best uh, part, it, it's, it's came actually at the summertime. So we have enough time to practice and to play around. So exactly. uh, mainly yeah. also I need to see like the, because for my knowledge, the strains in New York actually was the, the most like aggressive ones compared to the other states in Louisiana. So also I'm curious to know what kind of strains that, uh, they yeah. were in New York because the mortality rate in New York was the highest in, in America in the beginning of the pandemic. Of course, yeah. Right. So, and then we'll talk about what kinds of changes these are, and especially trying to understand whether it was the genomic mutations or maybe it was just the population density, uh, other comorbidities. You know, there are multiple factors that could be involved. But let's try to continue on. Uh, so, uh, with others, uh, Nayan, uh, Juliana, and Wenin, you guys have your set of sequences, or would you like me to share what I got? Uh, you can uh, share what you have, because I stopped a while back and just tried to keep it with you. OK, so here is here are the accession IDs. And what I did was I went to the accessions right here. And press on plus and you just paste them in here submit and now you have 12 sequences so uh juliana and nayan um let me let me know if this is uh, working out for you yeah it's looking good all right Great. All right, so now we need to download the actual FASTA files. Remember, we want to download the FASTA files. So here we have sequence data FASTA format, and we want to take the nucleotide sequences. So you just click on next and download all records. And you, you can use the default one. So just click on download, and let's download and actually look at this data type. So these are SARS-2, LA, California, or Louisiana, California, early, late. And if you open this up, how do you open a FASTA file? A FASTA file is just like a text file. So you can just click and open with any kind of a text editor. You can actually see what's inside. Okay, so let me know, were you able to open it up on your computer? And in the meantime, what I wanted to show is that this is the accession ID, right? So if I go back to my table, that right there is going to be the accession ID. And then you can see that it has an annotation. So it actually tells me where it was from. And it looks like this was sequenced by LSU uh, and so uh, in Louisiana, right? And it's a complete genome and it was in 2020. So you have some kind of a name here as well. And this is the full sequence. So as you can see, it's not annotated. It's not broken up into anything. It just goes on completely until we have the next one. And if you have a find function, what you should, for me, it's a command F. If I just search for this symbol, I should be able to see that there are 12 of them, and that tells me that there are 12 genomic sequences in this file. 
Okay, so now the next step that we want to do is we want to build a phylogenetic tree. Now we can build a very simple phylogenetic tree. Remember, we did this last time. So here we have selection of our nucleotides. And the first step that we can do is we can align them or we can build a phylogenetic tree. So let's first align them. Let's, uh, let us put this in here. Okay, and I want to select them, selected results, and align them. So the process of aligning them is to introduce the uh, inserts and deletions based on this full sequence, which is called global alignment. And then once it is aligned to look for the specific changes according to these positions that are highlighted in red. So here, as you remember, we have a full sequence that is divided up in a no number of different genes. And so if you look throughout these positions, the specific positions that are highlighted are going to be found within specific genes, right? So now we can open this up and we can actually see the gene organization, okay? And so who can tell me where is the spike protein on this genome? Does anyone know where would be the spike protein? Okay, the spike protein is here marked with an S. So this is the spike protein. So right away we can see that some of the sequences contain this one mutation right here in the spike protein. It seems to be consistent among several of these and is not present in some of the other ones, right? So because we have multiple positions across the whole sequence, and these positions vary by different samples, sometimes they are consistent and sometimes they are not, we want to ask the question, how are these sequences actually related to each other? And the relationship is something that we can study by looking at the phylogenetic tree. Uh, Dr. Alea, um, so you said actually the less mutation and the spike protein, this is true? We have less mutation, correct? Well, what I mentioned was that some of the sequences. Yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah, generally, yeah. there are like, there may be actually explanation for why the majority of the vaccine is uh, does related to the spike proteins uh, because of the, like, the less mutation. So it, uh, it, this means actually the vaccine will work for a while. I, this is what I'm assuming. I'm not sure. Well, okay, before we jump to the vaccine, let's first look mm -hmm. at the data. Right? So let's just take a look without making assumptions about what is it that we're finding. But our first question looking at this data is how we can group these by similarity. Now we're just talking about sequence similarity. Later on, we will talk about how do these mutations actually affect the spike protein. And maybe we'll talk about how does it imply the efficacy of the vaccines, but we'll do that later on. Right now, if you look, the point is that we have some consistent mutations that are repeated in several of these samples, and others seem to be more random, right? And so that is where the phylogenetic tree can help us organize this information in a meaningful way. So if you go back to this page and you click on a build phylogenetic tree, it will try to use the sequence similarity to align the sequences with a process, okay? So as you mentioned, they are acquired not by chance, but there's probably some process behind it. And 
we can see whether the process aligns with our understanding of molecular clock. Okay, so here we have built our phylogenetic tree. And let's take a look at what do we find? Do we find some pattern that makes sense? Or is it something that we don't understand? Okay, so we remember we took several considerations. We took geolocation and we took time. And so here we have California, California, Louisiana, California, Louisiana, Louisiana, right? Here we have the third month, second, third, first, third, third. And here we have 12, 11, 10, 7, 7, 11. What pattern seems like more probable looking at this phylogenetic tree? Is it location or is it time? What do you think? Time, bro. Yeah, it's okay. time. I, I'm sorry, I, I actually, I, I said time, but. Time, exactly, right? So we can see that this clade is all later months, and this clade is all uh, earlier months, right? And so what we see is that there's a separation into two groups, this group and this group. But this group right here, or this sample right here, is actually an outlier. So it is thinking that this one separated from the rest, and then these separated between themselves according to this separation. Now, this is what's called a simple uh, analysis just based on sequence similarity. It does not actually incorporate a real dynamic process. And so to analyze this data in a more detailed way, let us go to the platform and we'll start taking a look at what additional information we can get out from this more detailed analysis. So if you go with me to the server, you can either go with me here or you can follow along later. We will use this section called phylogenetic tree. Okay, and for this analysis, what we will need is also a reference genome in GenBank format and as a FASTA file. So let's see where we can find these files so that we have them um, ready for our analysis. So here I will type in SARS-CoV-2. And here you can see that there's a reference genome. It pops up. I searched for it here. It pops up right here. So I can go to this link. And right here, if you scroll down, what does this look like? Is this nucleotide sequences or amino acid sequences? Amino acid sequences. Amino acid sequences, excellent, yes. So if you find the first one, right, it says right here, translation, gene ID, and then translation. And then if you scroll down all the way to the bottom, you will see that at the bottom, you actually have the full sequence in nucleotide format. So this is called the GenBank format. It's annotated. It gives us the full nucleotide sequence, and it gives us the translation into the amino acids with a reference, what is this gene ID? And so what we can do is we can go to the top here and do send to, and here you can do a complete record, file, download as a GenBank format. So the GenBank format is going to include both nucleotide and amino acid reference sequence. And also, we can just download the file. So I need to reload this. Send to file and here FASTA format. Okay, we can call this SARS2. So now we have the GenBank file and the FASTA file. 
So to perform our analysis, we can go back to here. What type of data are we using for our analysis? FASTQ, FASTA, SAMBAM, or MSA? I believe, would it be, I believe Sam. Would it be FASTA? FASTA, yes. What is a SAM format? SAM format is when reads are already aligned to the reference genome, but it contains both the reads and the reference genome. We have a consensus genome, which is a FASTA format. So you select FASTA, and then you upload the actual FASTA of all of the sequences. So upload files. And I saved it all on downloads. And right here, I have all of my sequences in a single FASTA format. Now, I don't have any groups. So I'll just put it in here. And here I need to upload one GenBank file for framing codons. So remember, trinucleotide sequences that tell us what is the translation. So I'll add that, the revseq.gb. Now I have an option to also use evolutionary time approximations. If I have sequences that are not annotated with time, and my question is whether this is an early or a late or a specific year, I can use references that I know the collection date for, and that will be included in the model. So here, I don't need to do this. I'm going to skip. And now I can build my pipeline. So I'll click on start. Multiple sequence alignment is the first step. Then I need to translate into the amino acid alignment. Sometimes the positions in those codons change at different rates, especially for viruses. And you can see a reference publication here. But in our case, we're going to skip this. And now I have the option to select multiple phylogenetic tree formats. So I will choose one of these, and I will use the BEAST coalescent model. What is the coalescent constant size? Assumes an unknown constant population size back through time. This model is suitable whenever it is believed that the population has remained stable over time. Since coalescence is a process directed backwards in time, in opposite direction of the divergence, it is not advised for speciation times estimation. So it's not really good for time estimation. Let's see what about birth death process. It is based on the birth death model where there are both birth rate and death rate present. This tree prior is most suitable for trees describing the relationships between individuals from different species. Since birth death process first estimates the lineage in time, the last common ancestor and changes are measured in the direction of divergence, it is advised to use for speciation time estimation. It is more sensitive than yield process since it has both parameters. So this seems to be like the appropriate tree, right? Because we are assuming that there is a birth rate and there is a death rate. And we know that this is associated with time. So it seems like this would be the appropriate method. And then we can click on end. And let's give this a name. And run this pipeline. OK, did everyone understand the steps that we took in this pipeline? Yes, yes. yes. But we will apply it later, because it's uh, really, still, uh, yeah. The time is very limited for us to do it with you. OK, no problem. Did anyone have any questions? Winin, Juliana, Nayan, did you guys have any questions about this? No, I'm no, good. that was pre it was pretty clear. The problem that I'm having, Dr. Ilya, is that I tried to put my screen next to your uh, presentation, and it's not working. So. <laughs> 
So that that that's the problem. I you know I'm on a laptop, so that's 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 my problem. I don't have a big screen. Okay. But other well, than that, yeah. everything is clear. Okay, great. So once we solve the screen problem, hopefully we can do this together. I really like doing this together because if you come across a problem in the middle and you get stuck there for a whole week, that means that next time we'll have to start over, right? And so I really recommend trying to do this maybe after today's session. I do have the recording and I will share with all of you. And if you find that you are getting stuck somewhere, do let me know on Slack and I'll be able to address your question, okay? Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, and another point that I wanna make is that the same information could be used on your um, Learn Portal. So here under courses, there's actually a whole course dedicated to the origin and pathogenesis of SARS-CoV-2, where you go through all of the steps to find different genomes and then to align them and build a phylogenetic tree and compare it between different species and all the way to the interpretation based on annotation, which we will also do together. But this is a useful resource if you just want to try and do this on your own time. Now, another thing, are any of you here familiar with coding? Does anyone code in R? In reality, my, my son just finished a uh, training for coding in JavaScript, but he didn't teach me anything yet. Not yet. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, I'm working, uh, actually working in Python mostly. Okay, perfect. Well, one thing that I want to mention, I'll first talk about in R uh, because there's a specific exercise here. But if you look for uh, introduction, to bioinformatics. I'll just show you this example. Um, oh, sorry, this was introduction to data science. Introduction to yeah, getting introduction to uh, introduction to bioinformatics. I okay. saw the coding uh, one before. I'm not okay. Okay, so here what you can do is you can go through a quick tutorial on how to load these sequences in R, right? So all of these are sequences. We can load them and make them into an object. And then you can actually perform alignment on two, so pairwise alignment, and uh, try it yourself right here. So this is a very short example, you can see. Uh, but you can actually learn this code and try this. If you want to acquire also some skills, you'll be able to see that alignment is a very important part of many different bioinformatics methods. So you can try and do this right here, learn about how this works. And um, I believe the same is gonna be available with uh, Python, sorry. So Python. Okay, so getting started with bioinformatics in Python. right here. So please take a look at this too. Um, and this is a good practice to kind of get started with things. So um, what will we do in our next session? In our next session, we will take at the result of this pipeline. It does not take a long time, depending on how many sequences you've taken. So Dr. Bashir already mentioned he's interested in Egypt and Netherlands. You might try different species, human, bat, pangolin, just find their scientific names. I didn't find them uh, yet. Uh, if you want to try other comparisons with another country or between times or between different clades uh, using the pangolin annotation, try those. The objective here is to really make sure that you can annotate the results based on the data that we collected right here, right? So right here, we will have to go back and we will see that they're of different pangolin strains, that they come from different locations, that they have a different collection date. 
and we can see whether the analysis matches our expectation and what can we learn with it. We will actually start looking into the sequence differences to try to identify significant mutations that are uh, going to be important for all the considerations that we discussed today with vaccine efficacy, with transmission rate, with maybe uh, lethal outcomes and things like that. Thank you so much, it's really perfect. Okay, so if you do have any questions, again, do reach out to me on Slack or you can email me and I will see you next time. This time I have the recording. So I'm going to share that with you after the session.